In this lecture, we are going to study the API that the operating system provides to user programs in order to create and manage processes. So what is an API? An API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is simply a fancy way of saying the functions that are available to users to write user programs. So the API provided by the operating system is basically a set of what are called system calls, right? So what is a system call? A system call is a function call into operating system code that runs at a higher privilege level, right? So a system call is like a function call, but it runs with certain extra powers that regular functions don't have, right? We'll understand this in more detail as we go along. And the system calls run at a higher privilege level and they have access to certain sensitive operations. For example, reading from the disk or accessing memory or allocating memory, all of these are only allowed in a system call, right? And that way it is different from a function call. And also some system calls are blocking. That is when you make the system call, the process can no longer run and the operating system will take you out from the CPU. For example, if a process asks the operating system to read a file from the disk, say, right? In that case, the operating system, the system call is set to block the process, right? So the API by the operating system is basically a set of system calls, a set of functions that are available to user programs. So given that these operating, different operating systems can provide different system calls, does it mean that you have to rewrite your programs for every operating system? Because that would be a huge pain, right? If you have a C program, do you have to rewrite it when you go from say Linux to Windows? Well, luckily that is not the case for several reasons, right? The first thing is there is something called the POSIX API, right? So this is a set of common system calls that all the major operating systems have agreed on. So all the major operating systems implement the same set of system calls, the same API, which is known as the POSIX API. And because this API is the same, you can take your program and without rewriting, run it on any operating system that supports this API, right? Almost most modern operating systems are compliant with this API. And this is really a key uh, factor in ensuring that programs are portable across different systems. And you don't have to rewrite your program using a different set of system calls when you move to a different machine. And there's also another reason that makes life easy, which is it is very rare that a user program will invoke the system call directly, right? Most of the time, program libraries, for example, the C library, provide certain high-level functions and these functions in turn invoke the system call, right? So the user is almost never directly invoking the system call. For example, your C program might invoke some function from the C library, which in turn invokes the system call so that you don't have to worry about knowing what the system calls are and calling them in your code. For example, if the program wants to write something to the screen, right? The correct way to do it is to use the write system call to write to the screen. But this is a little cumbersome. So instead, you will use the printf function that is provided by the C library. And this function in turn will make the system call for you. Okay. So the high level takeaway is the operating system provides a set of system calls for users to write programs, but you don't have to worry about invoking them because the library, uh, program language libraries take care of that for you. So uh, we'll begin with a discussion on what are the system calls related to creating and managing processes in Unix like systems, for example, in operating systems like Linux, right? In the rest of the course, we're going to study a few other system calls. So the most important system call to create processes is the fork system call. So what does fork do? Fork creates a child process from a parent process. Note that there's no way to create a process just on its own. Every process is created from another process. So the operating system, when it starts, it creates what is called the init process and the init process forks off a few other processes, which fork off a few other processes and so on. Okay. Then if you want your process to execute a certain executable, you use the exec system call. 
we'll come to this in more detail and if a process wants to terminate it uses the exit system call and if a process wants to wait for certain events for example if a parent wants to wait until the child terminates it uses the wait system call we are going to study all of this in some detail and many variants of all of these system calls exit exist right there are different ways of invoking exec and wait and all of that right so fork exec wait these are the most important system calls in unix like systems to manage processes so let's study in some detail what happens during a fork right so here you have a parent process let's call it p it has a certain memory image it has some code right and this process in the code it makes a call to fork okay so then what happens the operating system makes a copy of this parent creates a new process by making a copy of the parent let's call this the child process c okay and c's code is an exact copy of the parent's code right there's the line fork the fork call everything is there in c also in the child process also and this new process now remember the os has a list of you know a linked list of processes in the system and this process c is also added to this list right so that the os can keep track of this process and both parent and child are now scheduled and they execute independently sometimes p gets the cpu sometimes c gets the cpu and so on right and both these processes they resume execution from the same point at the fork statement just that the return value from fork is different we are going to see that in just a little bit but when you fork a copy of your entire code data everything is made in the child and both the parent and the child are added to the list of processes and they keep executing note that the child's memory is a copy of the parent's memory initially but the child can go on make keep changing keep changing its memory the parent can keep changing its memory independently right once after the fork the parent and child are two independent processes that are running on their memory images which just happen to be a copy of each other during creation so here is a, a small example code that uses the fork system call right so here is a process p1.c and this process calls fork okay so when it calls fork here is your p1.c that is running a process and when it calls fork an exact copy of that is made into another child process right and if you see the return value from fork right this variable rc this return value is set to different values in the parent and the child both of them have the same variable but it is set to different values in the child this return value is zero right so whatever code goes into this rc equal to zero this code is the child code okay and this value of rc is non zero in the parent so whatever is there in this part this is the parent process which is the return value from fork is actually the pid of the child in the parent therefore the code that executes in this else block over here basically the parent runs this code and the child runs this code okay so this is a simple example and here is what happens when you execute that example this part shows you what happens when you execute p1.c you can see that uh, the parent and the child both print out output to the standard output which is the screen but these are this is output from two different processes the parent and the child with both happen to be running the same code with different parts of the code because the return value the rc variable is different right so next we come to uh, the relationship between parent and child processes and what happens when uh, the child process terminates and the parent process terminates and so on so the title is a little scary but let's go into the details so when a process terminates 
what happens so how does the process terminates it can just call exit and uh, terminate itself normally for example when you reach the end of the main function when you're finished executing all your uh, instructions the process terminates normally or if a process does something stupid does some something illegal the os can terminate the process right there are two ways of terminating a process a normal scenario and an abnormal scenario so whatever the way the process terminates what happens these terminating processes are not immediately removed from the list of processes instead they exist as zombies right and when is a zombie process finally cleared out when the parent calls wait right so somebody has to a parent has to clean up or reap a dead child only then is a process truly cleared out of the system okay and this wait call blocks in the parent until the child terminates right so when a parent calls wait until the child finishes execution the parent will block it will not proceed further of course there are ways of you know calling wait without blocking uh, we'll uh, come to that later and so now the question comes up right so here is a parent process that has spawned a child and until the child terminates the parent has to wait right when it calls wait the parent blocks until the child terminates okay and when the child terminates then the wait system call returns in the parent but suppose by the time the child has terminated the parent no longer exists what if the parent has exited has terminated before the child in which case what happens who will clean up the child so in such cases the init process right the init process is the one that reaps all the orphans whose parents have died so here is a process p it has spawned a child c and p has exited in which case when c terminates it is reaped it is cleaned up by the init process right because the init process is the ancestor of all processes and therefore all orphan processes whose parents are not around to clean after them they will be reaped and cleaned up by the init process so you may be having this question why is this the case right when a process terminates why can't its state be simply cleared out why should the parent call wait and then clean up state right there are certain uh, subtle reasons for this that may be out of scope for this lecture but just uh, remember that any time a process terminates somebody has to call wait and reap the process and clean up the process otherwise it is going to exist as a zombie and keep consuming memory keep consuming resources in the system So here is a simple example of a program that uses the wait system call. So this is the parent that has called fork, right? And so this return value of fork is zero here. So this is the child process. This code, the child prints this, and once the child prints this hello, the child is done. And what does the parent do? The parent calls wait. So the parent process basically stops execution. The parent blocks here. okay until the child terminates and when the child finishes that is when the parent moves on from wait and prints the statement right so here is an example where the parent is waiting for the child process to clean up after it finishes so the next system call we are going to study is exec right what happens during the exec system call so we've seen that after fork here is the parent and here is the child they are both running the copy of the same code right it is the same program that the child is running but this is not useful what if the parent wants the child to do something else apart from its own code right in such cases we use the exec system call so when the child process calls exec right what happens its memory image is replaced by another executable it is no longer running the executable the code of its parent but you can run a completely different executable in the child process right you will get new code new data and everything new right so you reboot as a new process so that is the exec system call 
and there are several variants of exec where when you're running this new program you can give it some arguments you can do all sorts of things you can set up this new process any way you want right so this is the exec system call and here is a small example right so this is again similar familiar code here is the fork statement a parent has spawned a child process and here is the code for the child process right so the child process no longer just wants to run the code of the parent instead the child process calls exec there's a variant of exec exec vp here but this variant basically runs some other program right it runs the word count program you can run whatever program you want you can pass arguments to the program right and so the child process is now no longer running this code but it is running it's doing something completely different whereas the parent process is once again waiting for the child and exiting so the fork exec wait system calls are very important and uh, we're going to study how a shell works in order to fully wrap our heads around these system calls so what is a shell in any basic operating system the init process is created right after initialization and it spawns a whole bunch of processes and one of which is a shell like the bash shell right so when you boot up a system you get a command prompt that is what comes from the shell so what is a shell it is something that takes user inputs and executes programs on behalf of the user so what does a simple shell do it gives out a prompt and the user can type a command it reads the user command and then how does it execute the command it forks a separate child process execs call execs in that child process to run the command waits for the child process to finish and then goes back to the user to read the next command right so all common commands are just like ls are all available as executables in an operating system and these are all exact by the shell for example let's see what happens here right here is a command prompt and you've typed ls at the command prompt so what is happening you have your shell process that has you know asked the user for an input the user has typed ls so then what does shell do it forks a child process and then it calls exec on the child process giving this ls as the program to run and once the child process finishes running ls it prints out the output from ls and the child process terminates then the shell calls wait waits until the child process finishes and then finally it comes back to the user and says give me the next command right so if you build a simple shell you'll really understand how these wait for exec all of these system calls work So the shell also does a lot of other funky things right it doesn't so what we've seen is the simplest use case for the shell so the shell can also manipulate this child process in many different ways for example if you want to redirect the output from a command to a file right you want to do something like this you want to run ls but you don't want the output to be displayed to the screen you want to store it in a file so that's a common thing that many of you would have done so how does this work so the shell spawns a child process as before here is the shell process it spawns a child process and then this child process has certain you know its standard input standard output everything was pointing to the screen right so then it says don't write to the screen instead it changes the output file descriptor and makes it points to this foo.txt it manipulates the child so that its output is not going to the screen but going to foo.txt and then it runs exec it copies the ls executable on the memory image of the child right so by doing this when the child process runs it no longer writes output to the screen but it will write it to foo.txt so here is some code that actually does that so this is your parent shell process that has forked and then in the child right here is your child process now the child process you close the standard output you no longer write to the screen and instead you open another output file here you've closed standard output and you've opened 
something called p4 dot output you've opened that file so that instead of writing whatever was going to the screen to the standard output will now go to this p4 dot output okay and now the child execs this word count command so what happens when you run this code so when you run this program p4 nothing gets printed on screen instead whatever is the output of p4 is written to this p4 dot output that you can cat and then take a look at right so here this code is an example of the parent spawns a child process manipulates its file descriptors manipulates its set of files so that it's no longer writing to the screen but instead is writing to some other file right so here is all this is the code of the child process that is being manipulated before it calls exec okay similarly you can also manipulate the input of the process so that it reads input from uh, not from the keyboard but from some other source so if you build a shell you'll really understand all of these different things